what's going on everybody got a video here for you well this problem here asks us to show that the absolute value of sine x minus cosine x is less than or equal to two, square root of 2 for all x all right so this isn't really that it, it may look difficult or you may have you may say well wh where in the world do i start to begin well it's not really that bad it's it's actually just like a it's a absolute max and min problem now let's 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 give it a go so let's start out and say let's let f of x equal sine x minus cosine x on the interval zero whoop on the interval zero to two pi since f has period whoop has period two pi. Alright. So it's periodic function and we're just going to let f of x equal what's inside the absolute value okay all right so let's find the critical numbers of f of x so let's just write f of x down again And if we take the derivative, so remember to find your critical, find critical numbers, take the derivative, set it equal to zero. So that's going to be, let's see, what is that? That's going to be cosine x, and then the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so the two negatives make a positive. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set this equal to zero. So that's going to give us, uh, that'll give us sine x equals negative cosine x. And then if we divide both sides by cosine, that's going to give us sine x over cosine x equals negative 1, which that just means that tangent x is equal to negative 1. So where is tangent x equal to negative 1? Well, tangent is negative in what? The, the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So, you know, let's, I mean, you, you might know this if you memorize that, you got that unit circle memorized, then you probably already know the answers 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. Don't, don't memorize the unit circle. Learn how to use reference angles and get these things. I see so many students in calculus that can't solve a trig equation because they don't know how to do reference angles. I'm going to come over here to the side and do it. So, so we got tangent x equals negative 1. So we need to find the reference angle. So tangent, and we'll call it x prime, is the reference angle. So x prime tangent x prime would equal a positive one because remember your reference angles in the first quadrant so we get x prime is equal to what inverse tangent of one so x prime would be what pi over four that's your reference angle so let's get our solution in the second quadrant yes i know that's not a straight line that's a little better so there's our reference angle pi over 4. And so here, if we find x, that would give us x is equal to pi minus pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 4. And then if we look at our solution in the fourth quadrant, uh, see if I can make a straight line. So our reference angle is pi over 4. So here x would be 2 pi minus pi over 4 which that's going to be 7 pi over 4. So we get x is equal to 3 pi over 4 
and 7 pi over 4. <clears throat> All right, so there's our critical numbers. <clears throat> so now, remember, I'm going to erase all this so I can come back up here and use this space. So I've got 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So I'm, I'm going to just write those answers up here. 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. All right, so on this interval 0 to 2 pi, we want to find the absolute maximum and we want to find the absolute minimum. Let's see what they are. Well, to rem remember to do that, you take your critical numbers and you take your endpoints and you plug them into the original function. The one with the largest value is your absolute maximum. The one with the smallest value is your absolute minimum. So let's do f of 0. We'll do that first. That's equal to sine of 0 minus cosine minus cosine of 0, which is 0 minus 1, which equals negative 1. And then let's do f of 2 pi. That's going to be sine of 2 pi minus cosine of 2 pi. And so what is that going to equal? That's going to equal 0 minus 1, which that's negative 1 also. All right, so now let's calculate f of 3 pi over 2. All right, so that's going to be the sine of 3 pi over 2 plus, no, not plus, minus cosine of 3 pi over 2. All right, so what does this equal? Well, remember... Pi over 4 is our reference angle. I don't know why I put 3 over 2. That should be 3 over 4. All right. So remember, pi over 4 is our reference angle. We're in the second quadrant. The sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. We're in the second quadrant. Sine is positive. Minus, and then here, the cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2, but since we're in the second quadrant, that's negative. So that's minus square root of 2 over, negative square root of 2 over 2, which that's going to be 2 square root of 2 over 2, which is square root of 2. That's the 3 pi over 4. And then f of 7 pi over 4 is equal to sine of, whoop, I was writing 3, of 7 pi over 4 minus cosine of 7 pi over 4. So once again, the sine of pi over 2 is square root of 2 over 2, but we're in the fourth quadrant, so that's negative square root of 2 over 2, minus, and then the cosine of 7 pi over 4, well, that would be positive square root of 2 over 2, which that's going to be negative 2 square root of 2 over 2, which is negative square root of 2. All right. So we can see that this is, this would be our absolute maximum value, and this would be our absolute minimum value. All right. So, all right. So we can see that F has an absolute maximum value. See, this is our function F of X, the absolute maximum and absolute minimum value of square root of 2 and an absolute minimum value of negative square root of 2 over 2. All right. So what does that mean? Okay, so that's that's f. Okay, let, let me just write the function down here again. So that's f of x is equal to, what was it, sine x minus cosine x, I believe. 
Yeah. So all I did, I just wrote this down again. That's what we let f equal. That's what we're finding the absolute max and min of. All right. So, so this function right here has an absolute minimum value of negative square root of 2. That's going to be the smallest. And, and we are talking about the y value because, see, we plugged the x values in and got these as the y values. So an absolute minimum value of negative square root of 2 and an absolute maximum value of square root of 2. So we can say that negative square root of 2 is less than or equal to sine x minus cosine x, which is less than or equal to square root of 2. We can say that f is between those values. And so what does that mean? Well, that means that sine x minus cosine x, the absolute value of that is less than or equal to square root of 2. And that's what they're wanting us to show. Now, how did I go from here to here? Some of you may know already, but in case you don't, if you remember back from algebra, the absolute value of x is less than or equal to k means that negative k is less than or equal to x, less than or equal to k. That's a property from algebra. And basically what I did is I went from this back up to that. See, so we've got this part down here, and I just went and changed it, wrote it as absolute value. So that's showing that the absolute value of sine x minus cosine x is less than or equal to square root of 2. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, subscribe, comment, and I will see you all in the next one later.